What's going on there, guys? Good evening. It is your Earthmaster here on the live stream, uh, December 7th, 2021, about 7.10 p.m. California time. Latest quake on the globe, a 3.9 earthquake off the coast of Northern California. That's the earthquake shown up on the Petrolia station there uh, on the uh, live seismographs over here. It's coming up around the bend. I'll wait here just a second while it picks it up. This comes after a series of earthquakes off the coast of Oregon. Yes, that is off the coast of Oregon, out in the Pacific. There's that 3.9 earthquake showing up pretty significantly there in Northern California. Let's go ahead and check out activity real quick here on the trimmer map along the Cascadia subduction zone. We did see an increase in trimmer activity today Looks like about 72 epicenters of trimmer. This is about the largest it's been in about three weeks. We've had a very quiet spell of trimmer activity. Trimmer, of course, is a very slow type of earthquake way down there into the slippage zone along the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, the uh, down dip downstream area, about 35 kilometers on average. Uh, for this tremor activity, the M energy release over here on the right side of this list shows movement into the southwestern part of Oregon along the coast over here, underneath the coast, I should say. Uh, like I said, down dip downstream of the locked area, which sits right off here off the coast of Oregon, up through Vancouver and ends here in the southern end of Northern California. So we are seeing uh, an increase in tremor, which could be contributing to the earthquake activity out here off the coast of Oregon, which now sits at, uh, let's see what we got far as the magnitudes go here in this region, looking at about 21 earthquakes happening just today, including two 5.8 earthquakes in this little cluster, I shouldn't say little, large cluster up here along the Blanco Fracture Zone. Uh, it's pretty close, folks, to the uh, Cascadia, which sits over here to the east. A lot of people think, well, this has nothing to do with Cascadia. It's not going to affect it. It's off the board. You can just forget about it. Well, I, I just can't forget about it when this is a major seismic hazard and subduction zone that's been building up pressure here for 321 years since the last 9.0 earthquake in 1700. A lot of this activity to the west, a lot of this activity that happens over here in the east, the Intermountain West region, to the north, to the south, all contributes to the dynamics and the pressure build up here along the Cascadia. So to simply ignore the activity off here, uh, off the coast of Oregon, is just, uh, it's, it, I'm not going to ignore it. I'm going to issue a watch out here for the north coast, uh, northern California, northward through the Vancouver area, the Cascadia subduction zone. Yes, uh, with this activity increasing down here in the south too, it's an obvious sign, folks, of not just a little bitty tiny dot where we zoom in and think, okay, this is it, folks. This is where the earthquake activity is occurring, and it's not affecting anything else. That is not the way I think, and that's not the way it is out here along the big picture. If you want to go down to an ant scale and look at it that way, that's fine. Do that, but I, I don't do that. I look at a broader scope of things here on this channel. Uh, when it comes to plate dynamics, one plate affects the other. It doesn't matter if it's 50 or 1,000, 2,000 miles away. So with this activity very close to the Cascadia, the activity down south now and the activity prior up here to all this activity, we've seen a deeper movement earthquake uh, into, uh, this was, I believe this morning, this 2.4 off the coast of Washington, Oregon area, Astoria, into the Cascadia fold and megathrust belt. Uh, kind of stirred things up for me a little bit. I was like, okay, what's going on? No tremor but we're getting some deeper earthquake activity in the subduction zone here. So when you put all this together, folks, and look at the bigger picture of things, it's wise to be on alert and pay attention to what's going on here. Uh, something may or may not happen. Earthquake activity, yes, it has been, see if I still have that map, it has been active over the last 120 years or so, as this map shows, but the difference is, is the amount of activity in a short amount of time. One of these earthquakes, say uh, 6.2, okay, eight, eight, uh, see what these time stamps are on here. We just haven't, uh, what I'm getting at is we haven't seen these magnitudes in a day period. 
Yeah, we've seen a 6.2, 1964, 6.5 in 1970. I'm just, I'm just giving an example here. Uh, five point, a couple 5.7s on 2006, but nothing like we're seeing today. This is pretty significant movement here uh, off the coast, off the coast of Oregon. Doesn't matter if it's a thousand miles or a couple hundred miles, it's off the coast of Oregon. Specifically, it looks like maybe 200 miles. That is pretty close. And it's just about a hundred, looks like about 110 miles from the uh, Cascadia. Uh, when it comes to walking on foot or round, riding your mount, mountain bike, yes, it's going to be a long distance. But geologically speaking, plate dynamic speaking, this is very close. I don't like it when people say, well, that's too far away. There's no way this could affect the Cascadia. I don't believe that one bit. That's just nonsense to speak like that. Some further movement down south here too as well, folks, along the San Andreas Fault. This as a whole, including some activity inland, yes, activity from the west, the North American plate, Pacific plate interaction, all plays a part on what goes on in the central part of the country. The dynamics down south here too, everything's all connected, folks. It's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. When you move one portion of the plate, the jigsaw puzzle, it affects the other, uh, either a nearby or a distant uh, plate. So it's something to watch pretty closely, folks. That's what I'm saying. Over, let's see, prior to this uh, swarm of activity here, let me see if I can zoom in here. Prior to all this activity, it looks like these earthquakes here popped up um, earlier too. Uh, deeper ones off the coast of Petrolia where we've seen that 3.9. Uh, there was an upper two and a, actually two upper twos, about 12 and 10 kilo, or four, 12 and 4.1 kilometers. Pretty shallow earthquake for that one. Uh, a little bit deeper movement here. The southern end of the Cascadia mega thrust. Uh, and now just, just off of that folks, just off of it, a uh, 3.9. Let's see if this thing has been reviewed or not. It has been reviewed. I think the uh, earthquake swarm has perked up the ears of those professionals and their handy dandy papers in glass uh, glass frames on their wall. I think they're kind of got their, ear, their ears perked up. Well, what's going on up, out here? Of course, everyone will try to downplay it. I'm not upgrading it. I'm not saying something big's gonna happen, but the possibility is there. Whenever we see a major swarm like that, what? What do, you, what, what do you folks think happens? What happens when we see this type of cluster? This type of movement, upper fives, a bunch of fives, fours kicking off, magnitudes getting larger. It normally, higher percentage type of the time leads to a larger earthquake. So it could be this area, it could be right here along the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm pointing at folks. I'm kind of issuing a watch for this area northward. Uh, it may not be a full unzip, it may just be, uh, we have seen historically earthquakes out here in the upper six, lower seven magnitude range. So the possibility is there um, historically. Uh, but given, man, just given this activity here, it's just a little on the worrisome side. Uh, and I would be on guard in the Pacific Northwest. Hawaii showing a little bit of activity as well uh, over the last 24 hours with some movement. Kind of stretching out there once again towards the Lohi Seamount. This is still... Uh, not perking the uh, volcano folks uh, ears just a little bit of microquake activity out there they're just kind of kind of watching it for now seen over the last week some microquakes right smack dab around the Lohi Sea Mountain underwater uh, volcano out there kind of stretching down there from the mainland you can see that little tail that uh, issuing um, some microquakes down there in the Pacific some activity around Mauna Loa as well over the last week uh, and more specifically over the last 24 hours, right smack dab at the Bonaloa area. This earthquake activity, very shallow, negative 2.1 indicated of the uh, terrain out there. Uh, so this is very uh, shallow surface quaking, couple twos kicking off there. So when the, whenever the Pacific plate moves, folks, we need to be on guard and pay attention, not only to volcanoes around the Ring of Fire, but the Big Island and uh, other stuff out here as well. Let's see here. It looks like about a, what do we got? About 10 minutes or so prior to that 3.9, we had another 4.0 in the uh, in this little cluster here. I'm just kind of trying to look at this. About 18 so far. It's possible they may add some more on. Uh, and I, I, unfortunately. The seismograph stations that I'm using is uh, right around the Petrolia area down here and one up here around the uh, northwest of Victoria area. 
kind of up here in this area uh, is where that uh, BC station is. So it's it's a little distant as far as like the distance away from this warming goes. It's too far to detect uh, uh, I think anything under about 4.0 or so. So we're, we're having a bunch of twos and threes and ones, microquakes, who knows? I don't have access to it. Um, I may try to see if I can gain access somehow. There's a Cascadia network out there uh, in the Pacific that monitors activity, GPS uh, placements and whatnot for uh, you know uplift, obviously uh, gas monitors out there in the Pacific. Uh, but I might be able to access some type of data network out there when it comes to seismic activity. I will try it. Um, I've tried it before and I couldn't get access to it, but I will try it again here in a little bit. Uh, but it's pretty important to see what else is going on besides just the message from the USGS. The USGS. I mean, we kind of have to look to them, right, when it comes to the activity. But uh, then again, they're late. They get late uh, info out, and sometimes they don't even uh, issue any information out until days later. So uh, just be on guard, folks. A lot of movement off the west coast here for sure. I wanted to check out Yellowstone because a lot of times when we see Intermountain West uh, movement, west coast activity pick up, we do see uh, Yellowstone start to swarm, and I don't see it at the moment. This activity over here looks to be the activity off the coast of Oregon. The reason why I say that is because the S waves coming in following the spike of movement on the seismograph chart here. So just kind of keeping, uh, kind of keeping an eye on it. Those are those two uh, five pointers. In fact, the 5.8 here looks a little bit larger than this one. But on the map, there is some distance between the uh, between those two 5.8s here. Not much, about 20 mile di difference, uh, and that could show uh, the uh, the depth difference, differential, but also the uh, location difference here. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with this 10 kilometer default depth out here. I think these are. Uh, Let's see what they're stating here. Uh, it has been reviewed, of course, but I don't. Uh, I don't know. I'm not for sure why these guys always default to a 10 kilometer depth. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look back into that a little bit later. Of course, no tsunami warnings yet. If we start seeing earthquakes in the uh, seven range or so, and of course 8.0, 9.0, or greater, of course that's going to be a uh, tsunami generator along the west coast and uh, other areas across the Pacific so it's it's good to pay attention to what's going on out here don't fear of course you don't want to be scared uh, but you do want to be prepared on the possibility of something uh, much bigger happening out here along the west coast so be on guard stay safe we will keep it uh, monitored but for now life, st uh, life seismograph stations are up it looks as though there's still continued earthquake activity on the BC station you can see these two spikes and I'm assuming that's the activity off the coast of Oregon. Um, along the Petrolia station here, there is the 3.9, but once this scale kind of flattens down, you can see some other smaller earthquake activity very close uh, to the Northern California region, but away from the swarming activity in uh, up north of there, where all the fives are kicking off. So it's, uh, it, uh, it, it's getting very interesting, folks. We'll be on guard and we'll be monitoring this all night and providing updates as they uh, happen here at the uh, Earthquake channel. In the meantime, we'll chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there.